let me recognize my problems have been solved. This this gets at the idea that we were talking about about that the the construct, the self concept is past tense. That that to see it as it really is 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 to see it as as past, as over, as done. If you are willing to recognize your problems, you will recognize that you have no problems. Your one central problem has been answered, and you have no other. Therefore, you must be at peace. So obviously, if, if I don't feel at peace, then, once again, I it's a mistaken identity of myself, mm -hmm. mistaken perception. I've identified with the construct. That's the problem. Change my mind. <laughs> it's always the problem, isn't it? It's always, it's always an identity confusion. Yes. It's always an identity confusion. And it's always remedied with a decision, with a, with a remembrance, with a, with a seeing that, it, oh, oops, that's the, that's the problem, and it's a change of, of mind. The atonement is, is, a, is a permanent change of mind. In a sense, the miracle, it, it seems to be something that you can choose. You can choose to forgive, you can choose the miracle, and then it seems like um, there are times when the mind doesn't choose the miracle, or it doesn't choose to, the forgiveness, and it seems to be in a state of unrest or upset. But that is is a part of the construct in itself, a fluctuating self that, that can at times be whole and complete or or remember its wholeness and then other times not. That it all the atonement is the fact that of it is all or nothing, it is a permanent awareness. The mm -hmm. fluctuation and you will learn this course entirely, or not at all. Those statements suddenly jump into bearing. <laughs> suddenly you can see the meaning of that. Salvation thus depends on recognizing this one problem and understanding that it has been solved. One problem, one solution. Salvation is accomplished. Freedom from conflict has been given you. Accept that fact, and you are ready to take your rightful place in God's plan for salvation. Your only problem has been solved. Repeat this over and over to yourself today with gratitude and conviction. You have recognized your only problem, opening the way for the Holy Spirit to give you God's answer. You have laid deception aside and seen the light of truth. You have accepted salvation for yourself by bringing the problem to the answer. And you can recognize the answer because the problem has been identified. And what a phenomenal relief. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the word that came to my mind too. What a relief. Is this practical? Is peace of mind practical? It better be, or who wants it? <laughs> what, what's the point if it's not? But that's yeah. the question that the mind must answer. You know, this is just a very eminently practical course. It's, it's aimed at re revealing the simplicity of, of salvation, the simplicity of peace of mind. It's a tool for helping the mind cut through its own deceptions, its own beliefs about it, itself, that circumscribe it, that, that limit it, that keep, keep it bound in, in, in awareness, not in reality, just in its awareness. And this is the good news. This is the gospel that Jesus came to teach to set men free. This is the hurrah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
identity crisis takes on a new a new look or a new meaning mm -hmm. in these terms. Yes. It's not something that occurs when you're 40. Right. It's something that occurs in the mind and is perpetuated in the mind until atonement, until the mind wakes up to who and what it is. So that's, that's a description of it, and then if you bring it back to I, you know, it's like that's, that can be a metaphor for, for describing the process, and then it comes back to me, and, and my, in that sense, the mind, and my decision this moment. That's the focus. That's where the attention needs to to be focused. If, if the attention must be splintered when the, the mind is, has its attention riveted on past thoughts and future thoughts, it's, in that sense the mind is riveted on the, the construct, on the concept. It, it sees itself as within that, that construct or concept. There is no escape for it. There is no relief for it, for a mind that is identified with a concept, a construct like that. If you take this line of thinking and you run it out into any realm of life, I mean, you know, you can, you can start to see the implications for for perceived problems in relationships, for perceived problems in finances, in economics and scarcity and so forth. Do you want to run it out in one of those, or both of those? Well, do you have a particular avenue? Well, I think everyone at some point or other has that show up in relationship. So why don't we run it out in relationship? Okay. Why don't we start with the metaphysics and give the whole setting of relationships a, a, a basis or a metaphysical underpinning so that we can we can come back to that. If we run it back to um, that there's one problem and it's a misidentity, you know, we can, in biblical terms, we can even call it the fall of man or the fall from grace or however you do it, to, to misidentify yourself, to, to forsake one's identity as God created oneself in spirit is, is the fall. And to invest one's mind or to believe a little puff of madness, such a thing, if possible, is where the the split or the big bang or the um, fracturing seem to occur. And when we speak of relationship in this world, we speak of um, relationship involving persons again mm -hmm. and bodies. Here we go, um, subject object. Again. Back into subject object and. Whether we define the relationship as um, you know, mother daughter, mother son, or father daughter, father son, um, as a relationship between lovers, um, marriage, uh, couple, close friends, best friends, acquaintances, neighbors, um, just on and on and on, uh, peers, brothers, sisters, brothers, sisters, just on and on and on and on. We, we, these are different constructs. Love is one. There aren't different kinds of love. There's just one experience of love. And, and to fragment it out and to think that there are different kinds of love is, is once again to make a construct of something to substitute for the experience of, of the true experience of the oneness. So the projected world was made as a defense 
against love, that as soon as the split seemed to occur, as soon as the tiny mad idea, the ego, was, was, um, was bought, so to speak, the lie was bought or the, was taken seriously instead of laughed at, then um, a defense was needed, in the sense the mind believing that it was guilty, that it had, had usurped the power of God, projected out, the ego projected out a world to hide in. And in a sense, told the mind, you know, you can go in here, this can be your home now. God and won't come into form. God won't come into form. He'll never find you here. Yeah, God is spirit and eternal and changeless and form is finite and fragmented and limited, specific, particular, um, that he can't come in here, you can hide. And therefore, that's where the, the identity and that's where the investment in relationships as they're perceived in this world comes in. Because, once again, subject-object. Now, if I'm in a deceived state, I believe I'm a person. And believing I'm a person, already I've got a deep sense of loneliness and, and upset and loss and guilt and fear in my mind from dis from making up something that was false and denying my wholeness, my true self as Christ. So that's why there's such a searching for love, such a craving, you know, seeking out Mr. Right, seeking out the right friends, looking for someone to trust. To reverse for, these feelings of isolation. Yes, to solve my loneliness problem, which I, it's not seen as I've got a problem in that I believe I'm a person, that I've created a construct of a person in the world, but it's seen as I'm a I'm a person just like there's lots of persons and I'm I've got a, I'm lonely or I'm empty and I've got to seek for something outside myself to fulfill me. And it's only natural. It's only mm -hmm. normal. I mean that's what that's what the teaching or training, the learning has been. Yeah. Is that and this is just the way it is, you know? And people come together. You know, people find each other and common interests. Common interests, not common values. Um, common purposes, common goals. Yes. It's quite sneaky in the sense of if I've got a construct of myself that I'm a person and I, I like America and I like the city and I like fine dining or I like sports or I like um, cuddling up and watching movies or pizza or whatever and, and I find another person, so-called, who, who likes the same things I like, wow! There's a match made in heaven. Now I've made up a construct of a, of a world and a self that's little, but the littleness doesn't seem so bad because I've found a, another self that agrees with me <laughs> on this. Complimentary littleness. <laughs> that reinforces my construct as being true. Sneaky, sneaky. I mean, in a sense, it's the match made in heaven. It's, it's heaven on earth for the ego because now the the form has been raised as a substitute for for the abstract spirit, and the deception has been bought, and it doesn't seem horrifying and traumatic. I've I've run away from from that, and now I seem to have made up a state where I've actually found happiness by getting something outside myself. And what's going on is that there's a substitution taking place. The mind is substituting that for heaven. Yes. Substituting that for God. Yes. Taking all of my emotional happiness eggs and I'm putting them in a basket of of this other love partner, special friend, um, and it can even be objectified into um, my car, my boat, my house, my rifles, my, you know, you pick your choice of... The of sports a, team I yes. root for. Yes. It doesn't matter what the constellation of of concepts is. These are thought form associations and I'm you know, suddenly the mind is very um, identified with the substitute because it seems to to uh, give it everything it needs, yeah. everything it wants. Yeah. And I don't have to remember about that light back in the mind that that keeps recalling and reminding me of my abstract reality. I can dissociate that